What is up, Bruins fans? Today I'm bringing you a clip from episode 362 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast, where Sam Smith and Mark Allred, joined by special guests Ben, ben Kennedy and Amon McLean, preview the 2024-2025 Atlantic Division. But anyway, they finished last in the in the in, in the uh, the NHL in the Atlantic Division. Anyway, um, they added Alex Barre Boulet and Patrick Laine in a trade with the Columbus Blue Jackets, which surprised me. I did not expect that. And um, they had a couple of departures, mainly on defensively. Jordan Harris and Jonathan Kovacevic uh, leaving Montreal. How do we think Montreal is going to do this year, Mark? Ah, uh, unfortunately, I, I just don't think the goaltending's there, and it's. I'm probably going to say that for a couple other teams in this division. Um, I mean, they, yeah, they added uh, a, a goal scorer that has has had some problems in the league before. But it seems like he's changed the leaf here um, to, you know, be a better player, be a better teammate and so on. So who knows what happens. Um, but I honestly don't see Montreal uh, making the playoffs at all this year. I just think that um, they're still in a re uh, rebuild and so on. They do have some really good cornerstone players, but I just don't think that they they can uh, cross the threshold this year. I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna make this point real quick. We're gonna keep this quick throughout each team because I don't want to take 20 minutes on each team. Obviously, <laughs> that that would be crazy. Um, ben, what's your what are your quick thoughts on Montreal? Uh, organically, I love the way they're growing and developing this team. You know, July 1st, they didn't go out and spend all the money. They had plenty of money to spend, and they still do. Uh, and that, of course, the line thing kind of runs counter to maybe how they've been developing and building this team, but. I do think they'll take steps this year. I do think they'll be better. It might be, you know, pretty easy to be better from from last year's team. Uh, but I like their development. I like the, some of the cornerstone guys, like you know uh, Suzuki and Caulfield, and and I do think this is a, an opportunity for Line. I mean, if it doesn't work in Montreal, wh where is it going to work? <laughs> you know, for this guy. He's going to be the next PDL or PLD. And oh, that, they'll. Yeah, and they'll be connected forever, just you know, with, with the the draft and the trade and everything that happened. But uh, I, I think they're going to be harder to play against this year, I, and that's what I liked about what Martin St. Louis did with this team is they're in that process where they are they're hard to play against, right? They lost a lot of games last year, but I mean Boston went in there. They they would well, of course anytime Boston and Montreal play, it's it's going to be a fun and tough game. But they were not an easy out last year. They played hard. Now St. Louis has to. They, he's got them playing hard. Now they have to figure out how do we turn that into wins. And I think you'll start to see that this year, but way too many teams to jump over in the East to think that they're going to be anything close to a playoff spot. Um, listen, we're all Bees fans here, I'm assuming. Listen, the league is better when Montreal's good, right? So, I mean, I can't say I'm cheering for them, but as, a, as an NHL fan, it would be great to see this team become more relevant again. Heyman? Yeah, I actually really like what the Canadians did this summer. Um, I like that they didn't spend any money in a way because sometimes when you see rebuilding teams spend money, they sign guys that like by the end of the contract, it just doesn't, it's not a good deal and ends up blocking in maybe a young player that you draft with a high pick and that doesn't have a spot and suddenly you've got like a cap issue. I like that they kind of just left some spots open. Even with the line A trade, they got a second round pick exchange for Jordan Harris along with that. So even then, they just boosted their draft capital more. So I, I actually really like what they did. I don't think they'll be anywhere near the playoffs, but that's that's fine for where they are. Yeah, Montreal, I mean, I expect more development out of their out of their guys. It's another rebuilding year, as we've all been saying. It's, it's They're not going to be close to the playoffs, but I want to see improvement out of Montreal, and I think we're going to get that because Caulfield's going into, what, his third, fourth year in the league, whatever it is. Suzuki's been there for a bit. Caulfield's been there for a bit. You know, their goaltending situation is a big question mark, but I think Montreal's going to make strides towards getting better into the next few years. Next team that finished seventh in the Atlantic this past year, the Ottawa Senators, who finished that numbers right 37, 41, and four on the season. They're some of their players they have coming in looking pretty good. They have, of course, Linus Olmark, Nick Jensen on defense, David Perron. Noah Gregor and um, Michael Amadio from the uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, departures, they lost a couple. Corpus Salo and Kostelik both coming to the Bruins, of course. Jacob Chikorin on his way to, to the Capitals, and Matthew Joseph also leaving Ottawa. What are our thoughts on Ottawa quickly? Mark? 
Uh, another team that's going to struggle, I believe, this year. I mean, they do have some, uh, you know, some good players. Uh, Stutzla, Sanderson. Um, I, I, I don't know. I just, I honestly don't think that um, Linus Allmark is the, is the goaltender that's going to save this this team. Ultimately, it, I mean, you got to think if he's going to uh, resign with them uh, if he has a really bad year and so on. But um, another up and coming team. I, I'm not going to sit on. I'm not going to you know poo poo on Ottawa's rebuild and so on because it, you know they have the pieces that you know they could be a, a decent team that can you know hit the postseason sooner or later. But uh, as of this year, I just don't see it. Ben. Yeah, I agree with you, Mark. I think, again, too many teams to jump. I really worry about their defensive structure. Uh, you wonder with uh, Green coming in as the new head coach, what's he going to be able to to put in place for for defense? You lose Jacob Chikrin. I've never been a big Chikrin guy, but I do think they'll feel that loss. Um, you know, we talk about Linus Allmark. He's going to steal them a game or two. He's going to stand on his head you know, a night here, a night there, but it's not going to be enough uh, to jump uh, you know, as many teams as they have to. And, Listen, we know this team from the top down, you know, new ownership, you know, new coaching, you know, all that organizational change. They're looking at a new arena. And one interesting thing more from an organizational piece, heard this on NHL radio today. I think, uh, I think it was um, Mick Kern was uh, interviewing somebody from Ottawa and they were talking about you know, the ability to sell season tickets and, and luxury boxes. Well, the two main employers uh, in Ottawa are both, you know, the federal government and I think, um, uh, the the provincial government and by law they can't really do business <laughs> with them they can't sell those or give those seats away or, or give those tickets away so um and it's not a it's a big city but it's not a city you know raving with all sorts of corporate you know opportunities so they're going to have a different struggle to sell some of those tickets i mean they'll get plenty of fans coming in but we all know that these teams like to sell sell those big ticket uh you know boxes and things like that so um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting year for them. Um, really wishing all Mark the best. I'm, I'm a little nervous how that's going to look out there for him though. Eamon? Oh uh, yeah. Again, I like what the Senators did, um, but I don't think it'll be enough. I mean, um, I think all Mark will help. Um, I like David Perron as a signing for them, probably help them with their power play a little bit. Um, uh, I think Michael Amadio is kind of underrated as well, but, um, I mean, yeah, Chikrin leaving is going to hurt. Um, I mean, they still have a few prospects that are developing that will help them in a few years. So if, they, if they're playing meaningful games in March and April, I think that's a good season for them. I would like to back up your point. I like the idea about Michael Amadio. So he was drafted by the LA Kings. Uh, I'm from New Hampshire. I used to see him in the ECHL in the, with the Manchester Monarchs. Michael Amadio, even then... I knew he was going to be an NHLer and he's going to be a consistent NHLer going with a team like Ottawa, who's rebuilding. He's going to have a consistent 82 game season up there. Cause they need people up there who have NHL experience and who, ha- who are good. So I think Amadio is going to only help out Ottawa big time. So I like that you brought him up. That's a good thing. Um, next up the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, they did some stuff bringing in uh, Sam Lafferty, Jason Zucker, Ryan McLeod, Nicholas Obey Kubel. Um, they brought in Dennis Gilbert as well. Some departures. Eric Robertson, I me mean Robinson, sorry, Tyson Jost, Jeff Skinner, Victor Olofsson, and Matthias Savoy. Not great from Buffalo losing those guys, especially Olofsson. I don't I think that's gonna hurt them more than people realize. Um and, and also Tyson Jost. I think he's just an underrated bottom six guy that can that, that is a really uh, sneaky little scorer. Um, Mark, what are your thoughts on the Sabres? Lots of key losses to their core, bringing in some newer guys. What are your thoughts on Buffalo? Yeah, I think bringing in the guys that are veterans and have played in the league before is going to be important for the younger, younger players on the team. Um, Buffalo is a team that I believe is going to be going to be one to be reckoned with in the next few years. Um, but it it goes back to goaltending. Um, I just, uh, you know, I'm not sure which goaltender I'm trying to think of, but um, um, damn it! But I don't. I just don't think that they are going to be able to, you know, um, steal a game because of the defense out front. I just think that the team's just a little too raw at this point. Um, 
Is it Uko Pekaluokanen? Yeah, Pekaluokanen. Uh, there's somebody yeah. else I'm thinking about that Devin, went to. Uh, Devin Levi? Devin Levi? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I just don't I, – I mean, good goaltenders and everything, I you know, totally agree with that, but I'm just not sure that this team is going to be built uh, for success in front of them. I'm just looking at the roster. It looks like a very defensively sound team. Jacob Bryson, Bowen Byram, Connor Clifton, Raspis Dahlin, Yoko Haru, Owen Power, Matias Samuelson. And they also they're gonna they're gonna make Levy and Luokan and work because they got James Reimer as well. Oh uh, and also Felix, go and also Felix Sandstrom. So it's gonna be very interesting to see what Buffalo does there. I think they're going to be more of a defensive team. Their offense on paper, for the most part, is mainly is mainly Tage Thompson and Alex Tuck. Also a little bit of Jack Quinn, but that's besides the point. It's mainly a defensive team, so we'll see how that goes um, out of camp for Buffalo and their goaltending and defensive situation. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Ben? Yeah, a couple numbers for you guys. First of all, number 13, that's 13 seasons of missing the playoffs. You would think that this team at some point will just get lucky and just get that second wild card spot. Uh, they were so close, I think it was a couple years ago. Uh, but to your point, Sam, about defense, you know, last season, they were 11th in the league in goals against. They averaged 2.96. That really speaks to UPL and that defense and what they did for being so far out of the playoffs to be ranked 11th. And then their PK was 13th at 79.8%, uh, so really not bad. So structurally, yeah, their defense is kind of their strength. Um, and let's be honest, saying Uka Pekka Lukanen, it just makes me happy. <laughs> it is a fun name. Eamon, what are your thoughts on, on the Buffalo Sabres? Uh, yeah, I really like their decor a lot. Um, their goaltending, I think, will be pretty good, um, especially in a few years. Uh, their forwards right now, they've got some holes, so I don't think they'll make the playoffs. But, I mean, I really like uh, – they kind of got clowned on for this trade, but I actually really like Ryan McLeod as a player, even though they gave up Savoy for him. I just think he's a really good bottom six forward. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think they'll make the playoffs, but I think they're um, – they're making strides in the right direction. Completely agree. However, I'm going to bring this up again. Losing Victor Olofsson is going to hurt them more than people realize. That's a good player you don't want to lose. He was one. He's one of their. He was one of their top offensive production players last year. So we'll see how that goes for them. Uh, coming up next, a team who kind of got screwed by the system last year <laughs> at the end of the play. At the end of the season, the, the Detroit Red Wings, a team that barely, and I mean. Barely missed the. It came down to the last game of the season for the Red Wings, and they they got screwed. Um, the Red Wings. Let's take a look here. What they did? Well, they re-signed Patrick Kane. They bring in Cam Talbot, Eric Gustafson, Jack Campbell, Tyler Mott. Here's the big one: Vladimir Tarasenko, Dabrinkit, Tarasenko, and Kane are all on that team. There's no excuse now. And the players that they lost, Jake Wallman, David Perron, Robbie Fabry, Shane Gostaspare, and Daniel Sprung. There is no real excuse for the Red Wings to not make the playoffs this year. With the roster they have, they have the goaltending, they have the defense, they have the scoring depth in Dabrinkit, Tarasenko, and Kane, JT Comper, Lucas Raymond. They are they have the they have the the, the pieces, Mark. Yeah, they absolutely do. And, you know, they got they got two hour phase they still have to deal with. Um, but I mean the ISA plan is is a slow process. They the, the Red Wings are another team, like you said, Buffalo, uh, 13 years. This has been I don't know even know how many years the Red Wings have been out, but um I think Eisenman's nine years. Yeah, nine years. Eight or nine um, I years. Think yeah. Eisen, I think Eisenman's got a, a, a good plan and so on. Um for me, this is probably like a wild card team, uh, wild card two. They could they could probably make it uh, like like they did last year. They almost got in, um, but we'll just see. And another team that is going to be heavily laden on their goaltending and and to see if these guys can can come through. Um, you know, they got some some players that have been around the league that really haven't fit anywhere else. So. It remains to be seen uh, how much of a stone wall they can do in uh, Motown. Yeah, they got Philly Huso and Cam Talbot. That's a nice little one-two punch they got in Detroit. 
Their defense yeah. looks, their goaltending looks pretty good. Their defense looks pretty good too. Ben Sherratt, Simon Edvinson, Eric Gustafson. You got Oli Mata, Moritz Sider. Like you're, who's going to resign after his RFA and everything? He's going to resign. Ben, the Red Wings look pretty good, right? Yeah, they do. And you know, a lot of talk about this Atlantic Division. You know what changes, what moves, and a lot of the pundits out there are saying they don't see real movement in the top four, but. I do think this is the one team that could maybe push a Tampa, uh, yeah, Tampa Bay, maybe for that fourth spot. I do have them in the playoffs this year. I do think they steal one of those wild card spots, and um, I think you're going to see three out of the Metro and five out of the Atlantic this year. Um, they got to get those RFAs done. You know, you want to talk about a fan base that's going a little nuts right now with Raymond and Siders. I think are, are, the, are the two RFAs. Um, they're having the same conversations we are about Swayman. They're worried. They're nervous. <laughs> I think they're definitely going to get it done. I don't think there's any question about it. Um, Patrick Kane, can he have a healthy year? I'm really curious to see, you know, what Kane can do. What, it, what does he have left in the tank? And yeah, the Tarasenko signing kind of caught me off guard. I didn't really, really see him going to Detroit. He's not the player he was back in 1819 because none of us are right. But I do think if you just have that expectation of him being one of those middle line, just you know, shot shooters out there, goal scorers, I think you could really add a, a wrinkle to this offense that uh, maybe they were missing a year ago, but. Yeah, I fully expect them to be in the playoffs this year. And if not, look out. It will be a long offseason for uh, that whole organization. Eamon? Yeah, I agree with a lot of what uh, you guys said. Um, I think I think wild card, second wild card spot for sure, um, they should push for. I think, um, uh, obviously, we're not talking about the Metro, but um, I think it'll be between them and the uh, Devils. Uh, to bat for uh, teams that missed last year that might make the playoffs uh, this year. Yeah, I mean, well, speaking of the Devils, we'll talk about that real quick. Luke Hughes, six to eight weeks mm. out for a bit with that with that shoulder issue, I believe is what it was. That's going to sting their defensive core in New Jersey. That's not going to end well. He's going to be out for the first, like, four or five weeks of the season. That's going to suck for them. So Yeah, Especially for a team that so many are picking to do really well this uh, this year. Yeah, exactly. Um, here comes a team. Here, number coming up next is a team that I think is not going to make the playoffs. I do not think they're going to. They're going to get pushed out. Tampa Bay Lightning. <laughs> I don't think they're going to make it. I think losing Stamco is going to hurt them so much. They don't really have much of an identity. Kucherov and Kucherov's great. Hedman's aging. You have Brandon Hagel and Nick Pollard, the two like really two still youngish but really good players. I don't think Tampa makes it. I don't think they do. I think the John Cooper experiment in Tampa is over. Let's take a look at how at uh he's definitely on the on the chat on the hot seat. Um incoming. Jake Gensel. That's a big ad. J.J. Moser, Cam Atkinson, Ryan McDonough were returning to the organization. Let's take a look who they lost, though. <laughs> Sergachev, Janot, Stamkos, Duclair, Dumba. That's going to sting. Is it not, Mark? Yeah, no, I believe you're absolutely right. Um, it just, I don't know. It seems to me like Tampa Bay might be going through the trend like every other NHL team does, and, and a competitive one at that. It's just you, you. You used to being at the top of the uh, top of your game, winning Stanley Cups and so on. But there's also a time when you dip down in the lull, and uh, you, you know you have to ride some pretty lean years uh, to get back to where you were. Much like the Boston Bruins, there's uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning are very thin in the prospect pool too. So um, you know it remains to be seen where this team ends up and so on. But yeah, I mean Neil Simmons Simmons is right never bet against Vasilevsky, but you also can't rely on your goaltender to save you an entire season. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Their goaltending might be their only most consistent, only, mo only like really consistent, like part of their team this season. Their offense has a question mark. Who's going to fill in the Stamkos role. Who's going to fill in that production. Their defense has some question marks. How are they going to react to not having Sergachev there? There's a lot of question marks, right, Ben? 
question marks, but I think also plenty of answers in the room too. Uh, I understand why they did the Gensel thing. I don't necessarily agree with what they did there, letting Stammer go and bringing in Jake. Um, I think you lose a ton of leadership. Uh, just that that voice in the room. You know, he he was there, Patrice Bergeron. Can you imagine Bergie not being a Boston Bruin? I mean, that's what Tampa's going to go through this year. That's a huge loss. Still only 34 years old, 40 goal score a year ago. You know, Gensel, I do like him. I think he fits kind of on every team. He played well in Pittsburgh. He played well in Carolina. And I think he's going to fit in very, very well there. The, the Shergachev loss, I think, is huge. I think he's severely underrated. For as good as he is, I think we still underrate him a little bit because of the injuries that he's dealt with. Um, John Cooper is one of the best coaches in the league, in my opinion. I don't. I know you mentioned maybe he's on the hot seat. I don't know if you were being um, – no, I, I, I'm you, not. You really think he is, but I think he is, and the reason why he is Ben is because the entire team now needs to see how they're going to do without Stamkos. True. I think that's how. I think that's why. Do I actually think he's going to be fired? No, but do I think there, there there's going to be a fire under his ass to, for, to try to get better without Stamkos? You're damn right. That's why I said that. Yeah, and it's a big move. For sure. I mean, I guess, especially when you realize Stammer's only 34. And you know, we talk about Vassy in that it feels like he's been around forever. He's only 30, guys. I mean, he's still, I mean, he's not young, young, but he is um, coming off that injury, had a, an average year for him, but still a very solid year. I think he bounces back in a big way. Um, I do think that maybe Detroit pushes them a little bit, kind of in the middle of the pack in the Atlantic. I do, I do have them in the playoffs. I honestly, my hot take today is I think that Carolina has more to worry about than Tampa in terms of making the playoffs this year. That's one That's, of those bubble teams for me. Good one. Carolina's another interesting one. Like, hey, you never know. You never know, right, Eamon? Yeah, um, I actually really like what the Lightning did uh, this year. They made some really bold decisions. Um, like Stamkos leaving, yeah, that that absolutely hurts. But um, the Sergachev trade was just totally out of right field. And um, I think it actually is going to pay dividends for them. Um, obviously, they got McDonough back for not a whole lot. Um, I think he'll help. And um, if we talk about off-ice losses of you know, Stamkos and his leadership, I mean, McDonough has been – he's won. Um, Atkinson, he's never won a cup. He's going to be really hungry. I think he'll help their locker room a lot. Um, I think Gensel, I mean, he's such a great player. He's also won a couple cups. Um, I think they're going to be a really solid team. Um, honestly, uh, I think they could finish in the top three. I think they could miss the playoffs. They just, just got to see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly, I like a lot of what they did. It'll be interesting to see how the how season goes. Bro. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? Tampa could finish anywhere and it would make sense. That's how just Tampa is right now. Let's talk about a team that I have a lot more questions than answers with, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Let's talk about them because I am wondering why they did some of the things that they did. Mm -hmm. So, Chris Tanev. Mm. <laughs> Anthony Stellars. Mm. <laughs> Olive Reckman Larson and Jenny Hockenpah. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know uh, why they tried to beef up on defense and why they went with these guys. Tana will be solid. Ekman, Larson, and Hockenpah. Ugh, I don't know. Some departures. Bertuzzi, Samsonov, Brody, Labushkin, Edmondson. Those are some top pieces that you just lost. Bertuzzi's in Chicago. Samsonov's in Vegas. Brody is, I forget where he is. Labushkin and Edmondson are gone too. Toronto, man, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing. They got a new head coach this year. It's not Sheldon Keefe anymore. What are your thoughts with Toronto? We'll start with you, Mark. Uh, a, a team that it, it could surprise anybody uh, for the positive, but also a team that could struggle as well. Um, I don't know. Uh, it just seems like the Bruins and, and, and Toronto always seem to – to find their ways to playing each other in the uh, in the in the playoffs, and and I love when the Bruins just win. Um, <laughs> I, I I'm really interested to see this team and how they respond to um, Austin Matthews being captain, and uh, and how a, a player like um, um, Jesus, I'm so bad with names. Tavares. 
Yeah, Tavares. Uh, what, what, you know, what, what does he do? You know, after you know, giving the C to Matthews and so on, and how is he? Where does he fit in the role? Um, you know, what, does he drop down to a third line center and so on? It's kind of rough, but um, I, I, I could see the, the the Maple Leafs making the playoffs, but not as good as they were last season. You gotta wonder why he gave up the the C to, to Matthews, right? You got to wonder why was it because the team forced him to, or was it because he gave it up very so graciously, like it's being reported. I'm not buying the fact he gave up that center, that, that, that captain spot. So graciously, I don't know. I'm not buying it, especially since it's, since it's his hometown team in Toronto. I don't, I'm not so sure. I wonder how that, if that's going to affect anything for his on ice play, Ben, what are your thoughts on Toronto? Yeah, that was a real curious move there. I did like how they, Know, the, the press conference and yeah they put a good face on it and you you, you know just want to be optimistic and hope that it was all very you know positive but yeah i have some questions about that too um this is the dallas cowboys of the nhl you know one of the best regular season teams in, in the nhl and it gets to the playoffs and they just completely collapse you know listening to the radio today you know all these pundits are picking them first in the division like well, why where are you How? seeing that no. You know, they're, they're going to be second or third like they always have been, just like a record player. They're going to keep doing the same old thing. I like the Tanev move. I worry about his injury history. He's a smaller guy. He plays hard. He's a little bit of a veteran. Um, I don't like the OEL move. I've never liked him as a player. Uh, I hate to say, I mean, he played well in Florida last year, but I think he's an awful fit in Toronto. A lot of questions about that defensive group. Um, Stolars, I think, will be a fine backup. But I think that goalie tandem is going to have to prove it to me uh, before I'm ready to see them elevate through the playoffs. Um, and Mark, like you said, nothing brings me more joy and happiness in this world than seeing David Pasternak put that puck, you know, in the net game seven. I, I was fine. Like, yeah, it would have been nice if they beat Florida, but that moment, that was my season. I was like, thank you. <laughs> I was so shit faced that night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I might have had a couple sodas too. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that, to, if for those who were on my stream during that game, so during that game, that was my voice had never cracked so hard in my <laughs> life when he scored. I lost my shit. I could not believe <laughs> what I was seeing. I couldn't believe it. Even when yeah, I talk. Yeah, I tackled my roommate when that goal happened. Like we were just <laughs> both, we went both for the hug, and we both just like knocked each. I knocked him over. He's so bad. Um, Please tell me yeah. you got video on that. Oh, uh, he has video of me just screaming, waving my rally <laughs> towel around our apartment. But yeah, I'm calling, um, out, I'm calling out before I get to let you go. I'm calling out my roommate Grant. He was at the game. He was there. Nice. I'm, he ha- he. I'm calling him out because. The past two game sevens, he hasn't been next to me like he has always been for my for my game for the games or whatever. The first, the one against Florida a couple years ago, I didn't want anyone in the room with me. But then the one last year, he just happened to ditch me and go to the game, bastard. Ammon, go ahead. Yeah, I I think the Leafs might fall into a wild card spot. Honestly, um, part of the reason I say that is if, if you just look at their roster, they have so many players who have injury concerns. Um, like starting in that Joseph Wall, I mean, the part, I mean, like, I feel bad. Like he got hurt in game six on a play that was like in the end meaningless. There's a 10th of a second left. And I mean, he's, I don't think, I don't know the exact number, but he's not played a lot of games this season to the point where Trilliving was talking about it in his like press conference. So they have to figure out like what's causing these injuries. Um, Tanev also has a lot of injury concerns. He's kind of getting up there in age. Uh, Ekman Larson. Uh, Hawk and Paw, like the contract almost didn't happen because of his injury concerns, which is another thing. Um, they brought Patcheretti in on a PTO. He's the poor guy tore his Achilles twice. Like, I mean, there's so many um, just like concerns. Um, I will also worry about some of the off ice stuff, like especially with the Marner um, negotiation, that that might just like become a distraction. Some like of that I could see, like I could also see um, with Craig Bruby coming in that. Things just turn out really well for them, but I don't know. I think there's a lot of reasons to be concerned. Yeah, the thing about that, about this Marner thing, it's reminding me a lot of the William Nylander stuff. Nylander had that holdout 
for a long time. And it's I'm starting to see the same pattern with Marner here. Same stuff here. So it, it's it's going to be very interesting. Sam, do me a favor. Highlight Neil Simmons, uh, fellow BNG colleague, the identity shift. It's a, he's he's got a very good point here. Berube does coach a very heavy team. We've seen it in the past with St. Louis and so on. But, you know, saying that identity, uh, the identity shift under Berube, bigger, tougher, meaner, may not have their signings, but they will be more physical and tougher to play against. That That's something that... You know, a team like that with uh, with high playoff aspirations are, are needed. Like, much like Boston. Boston did the same thing. Boston got bigger because they got pushed around by the Florida Panthers. So I, I could see them being uh, a much uh, more difficult to play against this upcoming year. It was it was a, a, oh, go ahead. A, Sorry. No, go ahead, Ben. You're good. Uh, it was a point that came up when I, I did a collaboration with the Running with the Devils podcast, um, uh, Ace, um, uh, we did our uh, New Jersey Devils preview. He said he really wanted Barubi uh, before they hired um, former Leafs coach. I'm forgetting his name. My God, what's his name? Sheldon Keefe. Keefe. Um, so he was actually a little ticked off that they didn't get Barubi, but I, I agree. I think that the country club atmosphere is probably out the door with Barubi coming in. And um, as a Bruins fan, yeah, wasn't really excited to see that. No, never was. Um, this is a great point from Neil here. He says, granted, it's all shuffling deck chairs on the Titanic as long as their expensive Fords stick around and stay comfortable. Your core four is Matthews, Marner, Nylander, and Tavares. Nylander it just got paid. Matthews got paid. Tavares still has a few years. I don't year. even know if he has a few years. I think he only has one year one. left. Yeah. Ooh. And then he gives up the captaincy we, on the final year of his deal. Yeesh. And then Marner holding out, possibly. Not good. Not good for Toronto. They're in an interesting spot. We'll quickly go over the Bruins since, we, since we've talked about them. The Bruins. Some of their arrivals, if you guys just to catch you guys up to speed, Elias Lindholm, Nikita Zadorov, Max Jones, Mark Kostelik. Some of their departures, Derek Forbert, Jake DeBrusque, Danton Heinen, Linus Olmark, and Jacob Lauko. We've already discussed this many a times on the podcast. This is, you know, a Bruins podcast. But Mark, since you've seen all the other income uh, arrivals and departures and now um, seeing the Bruins, what do you think now? Have, have your opinions changed on this team or are they staying the same? Well, they definitely got heavier. You know, this is a, a, a playoff team, um, in my opinion, that is more prepared for the playoff and, and the rigors of a long playoff push. I, you know, am I going to put $100 on Boston on FanDuel? You're damn right I am. Am I stupid? Probably. But I just, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to bet on it, but I'm not going to call them Stanley Cup champions. But I think that they make an advancement on getting out of the second round. Um, this upcoming year, whether it be a conference final or even a Stanley Cup appearance, that would be great. But it, it would be a, a positive move forward, in my opinion. It's not a down year. It's 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 something to build on. I think that the Boston Bruins are continually to, to find the pieces that are working. And I think this team is, is something special um, that, you know, is going to turn some heads. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm, I, I, give me give me till. December midway through the season, and I'll let you know how we are how we're looking for my Stanley Cup prediction. <laughs> we'll come back to that in December then. Ben, what are your thoughts on exactly. the Bruins? You know, I think they took care of two of the biggest needs on the team, you know, uh down the middle with Lindholm and getting bigger and tougher on defense. I remember two or three years ago just complaining to a friend watching a uh, Bruins game where they were just getting shellacked and we had all those, you know, smaller defensemen out there, puck moving defensemen. I'm like, I, I just was texting my buddy, like, I am so sick and tired. How small these like five foot nine defensemen, like I'm, I'm all done. I'm all set. Taking us a couple of years, but now with Andrew Peak and of course Sidorov, you, you know, Carlos no slouch. Um, you know, Laura is a, a bigger kid. So I think they, despite the fact they had to go out and spend that money, they did address the two biggest needs on the team. I have them first in the division this year, guys. I just do. I, I will talk about Florida next, but I think they win the division to your point, Mark. I do think they advance beyond that second round. And I think that Marshan has really surprised me as a leader. I really, I'm, I'm, I, I, I am surprised. I'm going to say it. I'm surprised. I, 
I think that uh, guys really love to play for him. And I really don't think, I think that culture that goes back to Chara has just continued on. And, and that, that speaks volumes, I think, for the type of locker room and clubhouse they have. Eamon? Yeah, um, I think there's a, I think they have a good shot to win the division. Um, uh, they won it two years ago. Um, they were so close this year. Honestly, probably should have won it. Um, some of the, they, I mean, they had a pretty big lead towards the end of the year. Um, I think they're better this year for sure. Um, Lindholm, I think it's going to help a lot. Um, maybe not in terms of points, but winning faceoffs. I mean, they gave up so many goals off D zone draws last year. You know, if you could throw him out there and he can win you a faceoff, that's going to help. Um, Zadorov is going to help the decor a lot, I think. I'm interested to see how Max Jones does. He's kind of just been on um, a Ducks team that's just been stuck in a rebuild forever. Like, just going to a team that's more competitive kind of just bring something something else out of them. Um, I, they'll miss DeBrusque and they'll definitely miss Olmark, but if um, they can find a good backup goalie, I think they can win the division. I completely agree. I have the, I, I'm with Ben. I have the Bruins finishing at the top of the division. I have them winning it. And the reason why is because, well, this team didn't quite do so, do well in the offseason. The Florida Panthers, the defending Stanley Cup champions, and what happens when you win the Stanley Cup? A lot of players outpriced themselves. And some of their signings they had, hmm, three of them. <laughs> All former Bruins. If you can't beat them, <laughs> join them, I guess, is what Tomas Nosek, A.J. Greer, and Jesper Boquist all said. But then they went out and added Nate Schmidt on defense. Some of the departures, hmm. Ooh. Ryan Lomberg, Vladimir Tarasenko, Oliver Ekman, Larson, Anthony Stolarz, and here's the big one. And last week I said this is going to hurt them more than people realize. Brandon Montour, who is now a member of the Seattle Kraken, and he looks happy out there in the player media tour. Um, Mark, what are your thoughts on Florida? Did they get better or did they get worse? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they still have a lot of their core left. Um, that I think they're still going to challenge to be one of the top in the division. Um, but it's all, it's, it remains to be seen, to be honest with you on how, you know, that prototypical Stanley cup hangover is going to treat them, uh, as it does to many, many teams who win. Um, you know, it's a, it's a long, it's a long off season of, of, uh, you know, parties and, and cup days and so on, which can, you know, wear on you a little bit, but, um, I, I think they're going to be a good team, but. I still think that the Bruins are going to be uh, just a little above above them. And the reason why, prime example of that, Mark, St. Louis Blues. They won the Cup yeah. in 2019, and every year since, they've gotten worse and worse and worse. It's like they went like this, and then they went down again. That's kind of what the yeah. Blues did. That was ben also was a team that actually woke up in December and January, too. Right. <laughs> so it was kind of like even this. A full season. It was kind of like this. <laughs> ben what are your thoughts on the, on the Panthers yeah I tend to agree I think you wonder about the hunger you know October through you know April how hungry are they going to be on that Tuesday night in Calgary in February you know when it's minus 12 degrees outside are they really going to bring their game every night and you saw that a little bit with Tampa too where it, it almost doesn't matter where they finish you know as long as they finish in the playoffs so I think they're going to be um still a playoff team for sure. Like uh, Mark said, a lot of that core is still there. A lot of that offense is still there. And listen, you're on a team with a Matthew Kachuk. He's probably not going to let you, you know, sludge too much uh, there during the regular year. Um, but you do wonder about the hunger. I, I, I really think that's the biggest question mark for me. They, you, know, you go back, you know, before they beat us a couple of years ago and won the cup this year, they were that team that was so good in the regular year and could never figure out the playoffs. It took them a little bit of losing. They finally got over Tampa, and they figured it out. Well, they figured it out. Now, can they repeat? Can they do it again? I don't see it this year, but I still think they're going to be a tough out. I think they're going to give us fits, and, of course, we'll see them night one. Eamon, as people are blasting music downstairs, shut up! All right, go ahead. Eamon, go ahead. 
Uh, yeah, um, I think they'll take a bit of a step back. Um, they lost a couple of identity guys. They lost Nick Cousins, who, I mean, it's just such a pain to play against. Um, Montour is such a great player. Um, I think that's a huge loss. I mean, he's just scored so many goals from the back end for him. Uh, Lomberg's another identity guy they lost. Um, I think Stenland, Stenland was really good in the playoffs, despite not having a lot of numbers. I thought he was really good against the Bruins. Um, they lost so many guys. It's just like, can they find enough people to patch those holes? I don't know if they can, but I still think they'll be a really good team. I think they'll definitely finish in the top three in the division. And, I, and when I say that they got worse, I'm not denying that they're still going to be in the play. They're going to be in the playoffs. They're going to finish second or third in the division, easily second, I think. But I just think the Bruins have that one step up on them now. They've gotten beat the past two times against Florida. I think it's going to be a case of third time's a charm. I think we meet Florida again in the in the playoffs this year, and I think the Bruins have their number because they've lost them twice, and they now know how to beat them. If you saw in the regular season, the Bruins swept the Panthers in the regular season. They won all four games against them in the, play, in the regular season. So they know how to beat them. They just got to put that into the playoffs where it's best of seven. So whether it's the first, second, hell, the conference final. No, not the conference. Well, it could be the conference final for all we care. If we meet them there, it's their time to win. They have the Bruins have no reason why they can't beat Florida now because they've lost to them the past two years. They know how to beat them now. They should anyway know how to beat the Panthers. Like what you saw? Be sure to come back next week for episode 363 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast, where host Sam Smith and Mark Allred will preview the 2024-2025 season. See you then.